Hello people, it's Makeda Valletta. I hope you all are having a good day today. Um, and as you know, I'm also known as the body scientist. And uh, the reason why is because, in case you don't know, I repeat this a lot, so sorry to be redundant. But in case you're not familiar with me and my work, um, I have a Bachelor of Science in Exercise and Sports Science and um, Nutrition focus and strength and conditioning, and then I also did uh, two years of graduate work in exercise physiology and nutrition. So I'm a sports nutritionist certified by the ISSN, which is the International Society for Sports Nutrition. And um, so what a sports nutritionist does, which is different than a regular nutritionist, because I'm also um, qualified, thank you for the compliment, um, I'm also qualified as a regular nutritionist, but the difference between a regular nutritionist and a sports nutritionist is this. If somebody comes, if you go to a nutritionist and you're like, well, I'm training for a triathlon, so I have to I have swim, I have to swim from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., then I go lift weights, and then in the evening I, I ride my bike, and then jog, and then, you know, I'm doing that four, five, six days a week. Um, what can I eat to get through it? Or I'm on a basketball team or a track team, and I have practice five days a week, six days a week. You know, what can I eat to get through it? So when you need your body for physical performance, like, and you have to be able to perform day after day after day, then how you eat has everything to do with how you recover and how you perform. You need to recover so you can go hard again the next day. You don't want to have gas when it's time to compete. You don't want to have, you know, you don't want to be too hungry and be lightheaded. So when it comes to an active body, somebody who is really active and they need to do it day after day after day, how they eat and the timing of meals is everything, okay? And so that's what a sports nutritionist does, okay? And um, as a sports nutritionist, we also have to know, and a sports scientist, we also have to know a lot about performance-enhancing drugs. I remember when I was in college, one of the professors um, that came and spoke to us, you know, he said to us, actually, he wasn't a professor. He was someone that worked in the field. And he said, even if we don't agree with performance-enhancing drugs, as a sports nutritionist, you need to know about it because you will have, you, if you work with athletes, you will have um, clients who use those drugs and they don't care how dangerous it is or what the side effects may be. They still will use it. So you need to know about it. So now, in the world of bodybuilding, right, bodybuilders don't train like athletes and they don't eat like athletes. Bodybuilders, first of all, the way they train, they, they isolate muscles. Like they just work their biceps and they just work their triceps and they just work their lats. And athletes do bigger movements that are functional, that actually translate into um, real life performance and activity. Okay, so athletes are doing things to run faster, jump higher, actually be stronger, have better agility, not injure their, their ankles, you know, and their knees. So athletes are training for performance, bodybuilders are training to pose, you know. I always call bodybuilders posers because all they do is um, get on stage and flex. But it's like, okay, you flex, but what can you do? Can you run fast? Can you do you have endurance? Can you jump? Do you have agility? You know, can you have flexibility? Like bodybuilders don't have any athletic ability. They're just like a big waste of space, in my opinion. Just a lot of muscle, a lot of posers, posers, right? And um, just because you all shut it doesn't mean that you're really that strong. And really, in the realm of strength. Bodybuilders are only moderately strong. The people who are really strong are the like the people that do the strongman competition, the people that compete in um, Olympic weightlifting. The those people are really strong, but they're not as cut up as bodybuilders. Okay, so now when it comes to nutrition, I mean this is the fitness industry. The fitness industry when they do push uh, nutrition with advice, which they should not be doing. Trainers are not nutritionists, and I keep saying this, and it is a totally different discipline. I know so many trainers that give nutrition advice and they have not taken nutritional biochemistry. They haven't taken all these classes and really studied nutrition or passed any kind of real uh, credentialed certifications or licenses when it comes to nutrition. But they all give it, right? So the fitness world, the nutrition that they promote is from bodybuilding. And so bodybuilders, their diet comes from, like, number one, steroid use. Because when you're using steroids, you have to, take, you have to eat a lot more protein. That's number one. But number two, a lot of bodybuilders, if you see them on the off-season, they don't even look like that. You know, like some of them are chubby on the off-season. Some of them don't look like the same people. But when it comes time to compete, they manipulate food in a way that it makes them look really shredded, often grotesque when it's time to compete. 
And um, what they do is they go on really low carbohydrate diets because in order to store, in order to be hydrated, you need enough carbohydrates. So when we are in a state of dehydration, in order to get water back into our muscles where it's stored, you need carbohydrates, okay? Without carbohydrates, that's not possible. So because bodybuilders want the super shredded look, right, for competition, they go to these really low-carb diets, which severely dehydrates the muscles, which is why most of them, they couldn't even hike a hill on a day of competition day because, or compete in the basketball, playing a basketball game because they would pass out. Then they're, they're, they're malnourished, you know, um, and they're severely dehydrated. So that's what creates that really grotesque look a lot of times. It's super, super lean. Um, they eat very low fat, which is also not good because our brain is made mostly of saturated fat, long chain saturated fat from animals. Okay, not that not the fat from avocados, not the fat from olive oil, but the fat from like animals. You know, beef fat, chicken fat, pork fat, goat fat, whatever animals got fat, right? Uh, dairy, raw dairy. Which if you watch my work, I don't, I never recommend eating commercial food from the commercial food industry. I do recommend getting the best sources of food you can, going to farmer's markets. I'm a big proponent of that. But when you're consuming raw dairy from grass-fed cows, eggs uh, from pastured chickens, that's where you're getting the long-chain saturated fats that you need for your brain and cholesterol. Without cholesterol, you cannot make vitamin D. You can get all the sun in the world, but you will not make vitamin D without cholesterol, without consuming it. You need cholesterol to make all your sex hormones, which are testosterone, and estrogen, progesterone, you need to consume cholesterol. If you're not consuming cholesterol, you will end up with hormonal problems, okay? And that's just a fact. Now, um, and cholesterol is only in animal foods. You cannot get that from plant foods. Like, there are many nutrients that you can. A lot of bodybuilders, they'll be eating egg whites. Egg whites are toxic by themselves. And you don't have to take my word for it. Go Google it. You know, Google it. Google toxic egg whites. Egg whites have very minimal nutrition and they're toxic without the yolk. So you want to eat the whole yolk. Egg white is a processed food. It comes with the yolk for a reason. And the yolk is where all the vitamin A is, the iron, the high quality protein, the high quality fats, the B vitamins, all of that is in the egg yolk. So the egg yolk is more important than the white actually. Um, and so, yeah, egg whites are toxic by themselves. So the, the, the bodybuilding world, they'll be eating like rice cakes and a teaspoon of peanut butter with an apple and some nuts and stuff that sounds disgusting, first of all. Secondly, they don't have, they're not getting enough fat soluble nutrients. They're not getting enough fat, period. They're not getting enough of the right kinds of fats because there's different kinds of fats. And I have YouTube videos about that, all about fats where I talk about the omega-3, the omega-6, the monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, saturated fats. There's different, even in the in the realm of saturated fats, there are long-chain saturated fats and medium-chain saturated fats and short-chain saturated fats, and they all have different actions and effects on the body. And um, so, and that's all, like, super important. So, like, bodybuilders, they're not eating like an athlete. An athlete needs to be able to get through swim practice tomorrow, in the weight room, tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. So they have to actually physically exert themselves. Bodybuilders eat in a way where you can't physically exert yourself on that diet, you know? They can do their moderate little weightlifting workout, and that's about it. And they can make themselves look a certain way. But what can you do? To me, that's always the most important thing. Like, what can you actually do? It's one thing to pose. Posing, to me, is not, is not impressive. What can you do? You know, so if you're if you're an Olympic athlete, I don't care what sport you're you're you're, you're um you're you're playing. I don't care if you're skiing down hills, if you are running track, if you're a gymnast, whatever. Like, there's a lot of physical exertion that comes with that, and not just that. They're trying to they're trying to win. They want to win, so they want to be at their highest level. They don't want to be a little tired, a little sluggish, a little slow today. You know, and so in that situation, what you what you eat and the timing of your meals is absolutely everything. So really, that's the difference between eating like an athlete or eating for bodybuilding, okay? Bodybuilding is a stagnant state of, is, and I consider it very unhealthy, because um, my, my personal approach to fitness, if you ever work with me or want to work with me, is that health comes first, you know, health comes first. Some of us want certain looks that um, is not healthy for us. Like, I have naturally thin arms. If I said... Well, I know girls with big arms, you know. So if I said, well, I want, I want to have really big arms or I don't want the fat on my butt, you know, um, I would have to do really unhealthy things to try to get big arms and take the fat off my butt because 
I store fat at my butt. Like we have to have a certain amount of fat to be healthy. My body fat percentage is about 22%. An elite female sprinter's body fat is like between 18 and 20%. So I'm about 2% higher than like an elite female sprinter. Um, so this is what 22% looks like. You know, when you see a woman who is looks manly and she's super shredded, her body fat percentage is probably like 10% or lower. So a woman's body fat should not be that low and it's not healthy. Textbook standard, a woman's body fat should not go below 12%. And even 12% is pretty low. I think for men it might be like 6 or 6% 6 men's body fat shouldn't be lower than that. Men don't need to have as much body fat as women. Women need to have a good amount of body fat for reproduction. And even if women don't want to reproduce, if a woman's body is in a state where it can't reproduce, it's not healthy. Okay? And so when women don't have enough body fat, they lose their menstrual cycles, which can cause early onset of osteoporosis which is not good, it affects your bones, so it's, that, that's not a good thing to do. So you have to have a certain amount of body fat to be healthy. So if I were to say, if I were to compete in bodybuilding and they would penalize me for the cellulite and dimply fat on my butt, and I'm trying to lose it, I would have to do manipulate nutrition in a way that's so unhealthy to try to do that. If I wanted to get big, you know, cotton diesel arms, I would have to take steroids. There's no way, I don't care, there's no... There's no I don't care how many push-ups I do or how many bicep curls I do, I am not going to have big old grotesque arms. I mean, not grotesque, I'm going to say that. I'm not going to have big beefy arms like that because that's not how I'm built, you know. And so as, a, as an ex-sprinter myself, I remember like when I was in college running track, I felt like I wasn't womanly enough. I felt like I was too muscular, like a woman should be softer. And I know so many women who ran track on a college level who said the same thing. When they're done running track, they don't like all that muscle, you know, and they, they actually don't feel like they want to lose all that muscle. Even though everybody else thinks it looks good, a lot of times we don't feel like that, you know? And there's no healthy way to lose muscle. The only thing that you can do to lose muscle is like a starvation diet, right? So, and that's not a healthy thing to do. So even though I didn't like the fact that I was so muscular, I knew that there was nothing, there was no healthy thing I could do to lose it. Now, over the years, you know, um, cause I'm 36 now, so over the years of, of not, the, the further and further I, I moved, I got removed from running track, the more that my body started to um, kind of like lose some of that that muscle. I mean, I'm still I'm still a lean person, but my thighs and my butt and everything were so much bigger when I was running track, and I just felt like I was too hard, you know. But there's no healthy way to lose it. So I mean, sometimes people have aesthetic goals that is not healthy within the the realm of their body and what their body is doing. So for me, when I work with people, it's always health first, function first before looks. And you work on the health and the function. Like, you do things that's actually healthy and functional. And the look will come from that. Now, you know, we have the ability to affect our looks a little bit. But sometimes there's certain things that are just not going to happen. Like, there are women who squat 350 pounds and they don't have a big booty. You know, they're really strong. But their butt might get bigger than it was. But it may not be exactly what they wanted. You know, so sometimes I just feel like it's really important to practice self-love. Accept the person that you are. We all have uh, things about us that are beautiful. And just work on being the best version of you that you can be. You know, to me, at least for me, my priority, I would rather live a long life where I can enjoy it because my body works and it's functional. I'm not in pain. I would rather have that happen than to be so focused on looking good that I end up with all these health problems and I'm miserable. Uh, I die too soon or whether I die too soon or not, I'm just sick with all these different problems because... I'm trying so hard to look a certain way that I'm messing up my health. Just like the girls who get in butt implants who I think are absolutely nuts because there's not a single person I know that has ever gotten breast implants where that shit did not end in, in, in a disaster. Them having to take it out, stuff was leaking inside of them. You know, like, I have too many things to live for. I think most of us have too many things to live for to be trying to kill ourselves for stuff like that. And it makes no sense. Because while you may want bigger breasts or you may want a bigger butt, there are plenty of people who don't care about that. There are plenty of, plenty of girls with little booties that have people that love them, okay? There are plenty of girls with little breasts that got people that love them and find them beautiful. So it's like, I don't get the people's obsession, you know, to the point where they're willing to risk their health. And that is not my approach to things. And so with bodybuilding, bodybuilding is all about the look. It's all about the look. It's not about what's actually healthy. I've seen so many people destroy their health with that. And so when you train like an athlete and when you eat like an athlete, it's for performance. It's to be strong. It's to be ready. It's to be explosive. You know, you never know when you're going to have to run for your life, jump on top of a bus, push something off of you, whatever. You want to be able to have the strength and ability to do it. So that's my approach. So when people come to me, like the other day I was in this, 
um, this spot in Chicago and this girl was talking to me about training and she just going through a list as if I'm a plastic surgeon. Like, oh, well, um, I want my butt to be like this. I don't want my thighs to be like that. And I don't want my, uh, and it's like, look, I'm not, I'm not going to go in and cut, cut, paste and make you the body that you want. You know, sometimes you have to, you, you, I, I do suggest working hard and, um, what I look at a lot is a sport. Like, if you want a body like a sprinter, train like a sprinter, okay? You won't get a body like a sprinter if you are training like a distance athlete. You know, if you look at people that run distance, they're usually skinny, fat, they're sunken in, you know, they're they're hanging. Then That's why I'm not jogging, you know? This girl, she wanted me to, to, to run with her. Like, oh, run with me. First of all, I hate running. That's number one. Like, I'll sprint. But distance, no thanks. I hate it. Number two... I'm not trying to lose weight and be thinner. If I were to if I were to train for a marathon, I would run my thighs off, I'd run my butt off, it would be gone. I don't want that. I don't like to to run distance and I don't want that to happen to my body, so I wouldn't do that. But I know that that if I go outside and say I'm gonna sprint hundred meters five, six times, you know, I'm gonna do that, that's gonna build my thighs. That's gonna build my glutes, that's gonna build my abs. Now, for someone who's like, I don't want my thighs to be any bigger, I don't they're like I don't want my thighs to be any bigger, then don't sprint. But if you are a sprinter, if you compete in track and field, and you're a sprinter, and you don't want your thighs to be any bigger, there's nothing that you can do about that as long as you're competing in that sport. Because what you're doing to be faster, going to track practice, is going to make your thighs bigger. So there's nothing, you can't like, if you are playing a sport, it's hard, you can't like have this aesthetic goal too. Like there was a girl I trained years ago, she's um, blown up now. But she was a basketball player. This is like back in like 2004. She was like the top 50 best basketball players, high school players in the country. And she was amazing. And she used to always tell me, oh, Makeda, like, oh, I don't like my abs. And like, I want my abs to be like this. And she was coming back from an injury on her way to Stanford. And it was like, when you go back to school, they're going to test you. Your strength and conditioning coaches were going to test her in her mile time, how much she could bench, you know, her squats, all of that. So if you have these things, these things are going to be measured by your coaches. That's what we're training for. If I'm going to train you to get your abs a little bit more tight, then the things that you might have to do are counterproductive to what you need to do with basketball right now and what you're going to be tested on. Because you can't train for a good mile time and train like a sprinter. They don't go together, okay? This is something I know because I have a degree in sports science. This is the reason why it's good to talk to people who know what they're talking about. There's a lot of people in this industry who do not know what they're talking about and they push propaganda. And so um, I hope this conversation made sense. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I need to say? No, but bodybuilders, uh, they don't eat like athletes. And if you want to be healthy and strong and functional, then I don't suggest that you follow bodybuilding workouts or diets, okay? So um, definitely follow me on, on um, my YouTube videos, The Body Scientist 81. And I'm always available to work with clients um, from a distance or in person. Okay, you can always email, email me at thebodysidethis81 at gmail.com. So I hope you all have a good day, and I hope this video was helpful. Bye.